Good morning, everyone. My name is Mickey. Welcome to my studio. I like to call it the So Fine Studio. I think that's kind of a funny joke if you get it. Mickey, you're so fine. You blow my mind. So fine. Get it. <laughs> anyway, Happy New Year, everyone. 2021. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, let's go ahead and find a comfortable seat. Or if you'd like, you can even come to lying on your back. I'm just going to walk us through a little bit of a, um, we'll start with a little meditation and then um, we'll get started on our practice. So if you have a blanket or blocks or strap, that can be helpful, but you can also not have one. I like to sit um, on two blocks stacked up in between my ankles. This is called a supported hero's pose. Um, but if you'd like, maybe you'd like to come to lying on your back in um, Shavasana or maybe a constructed rest by um, tenting your knees together and allowing your feet to walk out as wide as your mat. So in whichever way you feel comfortable, you can come to a seat. I'm going to be sharing at the beginning of class from this book. Can you see it? <laughs> it's called The Yamas and the Niyamas, and it's by Deborah Adele. I think that's how you say her name. But um, I've been listening to this book on audiobooks, and <clears throat> the yamas and the niyamas are two of the eight limbs of yoga. And I just um, completed a self study group with one of my favorite teachers, Kelly Carlson, or no, Carl, I can't remember how to pronounce her last name. Kelly, I'll just put it at Kelly. And so we were studying the yamas and niyamas, and I feel like it's one of those things where, um, it can be something that we come back to a lot in terms of like a yoga philosophy. So what I thought I would start to do to help myself and to help you guys is to bring in a little bit of the yamas and niyamas and theme our class a little bit about around them. So the very first yama, and just feel free to just come to a comfortable seat and let's start by closing down the eyes. And just allow the shoulders to relax away from the ears. And then let's listen to a little bit about the first yama. So the first yama is called ahisma, ahimsa, ahimsa. And that means nonviolence. So the thing about this one is it's about finding our courage, creating balance, dealing with powerlessness, self-love, violence to others, developing compassion. Um, and I'll read the quote. So I thought it was a really nice quote. I was listening to the audiobook. I like to listen to the audiobook and read along with the book. I think that's really fun. So the first quote or the quote um, in the questions to consider is by Eddie Hillisum, who was a young Holocaust victim. And she says, ultimately, we have one moral duty to reclaim large areas of peace in ourselves, more and more peace, and to reflect it towards others. And the more peace there is in us, the more peace there will also be in our troubled world. So I love that quote, and I thought I would just start out class contemplating that quote. And for me, what that means is that the ultimate act of self-love showing up on my yoga mat, creating this inner peace and working on my self-love is really the only way, the only tool that I have to create change in the world. Wow, that's very profound. So when we think about ahimsa, nonviolence, it's like, what, in what ways am I maybe inflicting violence upon myself even when I am super critical with myself. So recently I had a talk with a friend who's a teacher and she was criticizing herself for not being able to show up for something in her teaching career. And I pointed out to her, well, it's really interesting to me because you also said that this is your fault that you're not able to show up for this thing, but yet the systems around you are not supporting you to show up for that thing. So I just thought that sort of reminded me of the ahimsa 
and how we can maybe soften with ourselves and offer ourselves a little more compassion to realize that we're perfect and we're whole just the way we are. With all of that said, if you have any kind of intention for your practice today, you can go ahead and bring that intention to mind and just allow the intention to plant itself at your heart center. Maybe the intention is something around the theme of nonviolence, something to do with compassion, with self-love, or anything in your life that you'd like to cultivate, or maybe even anything in your life you'd like to release. And with your next inhale breath, go ahead and roll the shoulders up towards the ears. And with the next exhale, release them back and down. <sighs> maybe sigh through the mouth, letting go of any tension or holding. And with the pace of your own breath, you can just continually roll the shoulders up and around and back. With each inhale, taking in that intention, letting it expand through the heart center. And with each exhale, releasing any tension or any blockages that are keeping you from that intention. And you might start to explore some organic movement, maybe rolling one shoulder up towards the ear at a time, toggling shoulder to shoulder, and just feeling the expansiveness through the back body. One of my teachers has said that the back body is our seat of self-care. focusing on our own needs and sending ourselves gratitude for showing up today and taking this time for self-care. Realizing that this act of service to ourselves is an act of service to the whole world. And you can go ahead and reverse the direction of your toggle, bringing the shoulders up from behind and around and down in front. And just in recognition of the fact that your needs matter, our needs matter, just feel free to modify your practice in any way that serves you today, knowing that you are your own best teacher. Now we'll sink the shoulders up, squeezing the shoulder blades together. You can round the shoulders up from behind, bringing them towards the ears and allowing them to cascade down in front. Just a few more times at your own pace. And then we'll Invite the hands to meet at the heart center. Once you come back to stillness, you can inhale the arms up overhead and look up, drawing that energy into the heart center and then bowing your head towards the wisdom of your loving heart. Then let's come onto our backs. Before we do, we're going to come into a heart opener. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. If you have a blanket handy, you can take your blanket and whichever way, let's see, I'm gonna make a big rectangle. And then from the edge, you can roll up the blanket into a roll. So I'm not gonna roll it all the way up because it might be too big of a roll. If you don't have a blanket, you can also do this with the edge of your yoga mat. So you can just take the edge of your yoga mat and roll that up to create a roll. This is going to um, help us stretch through the upper back and it's also going to be a nice heart opener. So you might play around with um, how big or how small you want the roll. If you're wearing 
a bra, your um, roll might land at the edge of your bra strap, the bottom of your bra strap. That's probably towards the bottom of your um, shoulder blades. So we'll just take a moment to lie back on the roll. So finding it in a position that feels good, and you can always kind of sway your hips a little back and forth until you find that right spot. And then maybe bring your arms next to your body in cactus arms or goalpost arms. And then with the feet, you can either allow the knees to tent together with the feet wide. You might stretch the legs long. Or a third option would be to draw the soles of the feet together and allow the knees to fall out to the sides. If you have any blocks handy and you wanna do this reclined butterfly, you could bring blocks to the edge of the knees for a little more support. So find whichever shape is gonna be most nourishing to you. We'll just take a moment to Relax in the shape. Sense the shoulders melting down towards the earth. Feel the opening of the heart. With each inhale, you might feel the heart begin to expand in all directions. Imagining you were increasing your capacity to give and receive love from your heart. Sensing your body settled into the shape. Maybe you find a nice gentle back bend. With the roll just at the right place, gently massage the spine. And you might begin to bring a little movement into the neck by turning the gaze over to the right shoulder. Inhaling back to center and then rocking the nose over towards the left shoulder. And just allow yourself to gently move the gaze back and forth, either with a soft gaze or closing down the eyes. Go ahead and take one more round on each side. And then we'll meet back in center. You can roll over onto your right side and press yourself up and remove the blanket or unroll your mat. And we'll move those props out of the way. And let's come back onto our backs. And then you can hug your knees into your chest, maybe wrapping your hands around the back of your thighs. This is where it could be nice to have a strap. If it's hard to reach around your thighs, you could wrap your strap around the back of your thighs or the front of your shins. And just gently rock from side to side. Massaging the spine and the low back. And then we'll release the strap and bring our hands and our knees up into an upside down tabletop. So you're going to press your palms up towards the sky. <clears throat> allow the shins to be parallel with the, with the ceiling. And start to draw the belly in towards the spine activating the strength of the core, pressing the low back towards the mat. You can stay right here 
engaging with the core or with the next inhale, go ahead and reach the right arm back and the left leg long. Exhale to draw them back to center and then inhale to switch sides. And we're hovering the arm and the leg. So the right leg reaches long and the left arm reaches long. And then exhale to bring it back to center. You can continue to alternate side to side. Awakening through the core. go ahead and take one more round on each side. And the next time you come back to center, you can release the feet down, release the arms at your sides. And we'll press the hands next to the hips walking the heels in towards the sit bones. And on your next inhale, go ahead and float the arms up overhead, reaching them behind you. Exhale to lower the hands back down towards the hips. If you'd like, you can press the palms towards the earth and then inhale to lift the hips up into a bridge. Exhale, lower the spine back down one vertebrae at a time. And we'll alternate just like this. Inhale, lifting the arms up overhead, reaching the fingers long past the ears. Exhale to lower them back down next to your hips. Pressing the palms towards the mat, we'll inhale to lift the hips and exhale to lower the spine back down one vertebrae at a time. Go ahead and take three more rounds just like this at your own pace. Inhaling to lift the arms, exhaling to lower. Inhaling to lift the hips, exhaling to lower. And two more times. Allowing yourself to follow the pace of your own breath. And just noticing where you can relax extra effort. Is it possible to balance your effort and your ease? And last time, coming up into bridge, you might walk the shoulders underneath the body and interlace the hands behind you. Pressing the hips up towards the sky, tucking the chin towards the chest. And just take a few rounds of breath here in your last bridge. Imagine yourself like Golden Gate Bridge, the wind pressing against your strong structure. And with your next exhale, you can release the hands back down, release the hips back down one vertebrae at a time. And then we'll shift the hips over to the left and roll onto our right side. Here you might have a blank, use that same blanket or a block or your bicep to rest your head. So I like to put a block on the low setting underneath my temple. And then if you are using your hand or your bicep as a pillow, you'll have your, your hand up top and you could cradle your neck or you could stretch your right arm out long we're going to come into a few rounds of
clamshells. So with your knees coming out at, at 90 degrees and imagine, yeah, it's like a chair shape here. You're gonna glue your heels together and then begin to lift and lower the left knee. If you had a TheraBand, you could wrap the TheraBand around your thighs for a little bit extra resistance. In fact, I have one, so maybe I'll just demonstrate that. So at your own pace, just take a few rounds, lifting and lowering the knees, gluing the heels together until you feel the sensation of your glutes working, firing up and activating. And you might take a moment to count to 10. And then we'll glue the knees together and begin to lift the left heel. So we're trying to find a name for this pose. So you can lift and lower the left heel, finding a little bit of internal rotation the hips and the glutes. So notice the difference in what muscles are activating here. You might really take your time slowing down the movement, following the pace of your own breath. And then we'll come back to stillness. Go ahead and reach the left fingertips over to touch the right palm. So if you're balancing your head on your bicep, you might stretch both arms out and just rest your head on the floor. And then we'll slide the left arm across the chest, opening up through the heart to come into a twist. You might even slide the right leg long and allow the left knee to fall towards the ground. You'd like to deepen the twist. So on your next inhale, we'll sweep the left arm up and over, reaching it towards the right palm. And then glide the left hand across the chest to open it back up. And one more time like this. Rainbow, the left hand up and over. And then exhale to release, coming back into your twist. Go ahead and relax in the shape. If you did want to elevate the left knee a little bit, you could take a bolster or a block to rest that left knee on. Maybe you send your gaze over to your right fingers, or maybe you turn your gaze over towards the left hand. Go ahead and take one more nice deep breath in your twist. And then we'll untwist ourselves coming onto our back. And let's cross our left ankle over our right thigh for figure four. Just finding a little bit of stretch through the outer glute. You might leave the right foot on the floor or you might draw the shape towards the chest. I'm going to take the TheraBand off of my left thigh so that I can use the TheraBand just like a strap to draw the right thigh towards my body. And with your next exhale, we'll release that side. And let's come on to the left side body so you can Scoot your hips over to the right and then float over 
to the left side. Here again, you might prop yourself up, maybe resting your head on your bicep, or if you have a block or a pillow, you can rest that underneath the head. And we'll start out with our clamshells on this side. So making sure your knees are coming out at 90 degrees and your heels are just below your knees. And we'll take a few rounds of lifting the knee, maybe using that resistance band around the thighs. And just allowing yourself to follow the pace of your own breath, strengthening through the glute muscles, and sending appreciation really for the strong muscles that help support us throughout our day and help alleviate any pressure on the knees. Once you feel complete on that side, you can glue the knees together and begin to lower and lift the right heel. Maybe slowing down the movement, really noticing the sensations. We'll take one more round here. And then you can come to relax on your side. Maybe allowing your head to fall towards the mat. Or you can keep resting it on a block or a pillow. And then we'll reach the left finger or the right fingertips over towards the left. And on your next inhale, let's slide the chest open, reaching the right fingertips over towards the right for a twist. And I'm going to remove the block here. On your next inhale, let's close this up, bringing the right hand up and over the body. And then once more, sliding the right hand across the chest to open up to the right. And one more time, rainbow the right fingertips up and over. And then exhale to relax into your twist. You might send the gaze over towards the right fingertips. And if you'd like to deepen the stretch, you can Bring the right knee to the ground, stretching the left leg long. Maybe you have a block or a blanket or even a bolster that you'd like to stack underneath that right knee. And just allow yourself to settle into this twist. You might play around with sending your gaze over towards your left fingertips or maybe stretching your gaze behind you towards your right fingertips. We'll take one more nice deep breath in our twist and then let's go ahead and untwist coming onto the back. You can realign the spine, coming into your bridge prep shape, and then we'll wrap the, I'm going to take the strap off of my right thigh. You can cross your right ankle over your left thigh, and maybe stay here, or if you'd like, you can draw the shape towards the chest, maybe wrapping a strap behind the left thigh or interlacing the fingers behind that thigh. Sending breath into the right hip. Relaxing 
through the jaw, through the neck, and through the shoulders. And whenever you're ready, you can unravel your, yourself coming back onto your feet on the mat. And then we'll draw the knees in towards the chest. And you can walk the hands up towards the ankles or the knife edge of the feet, coming into happy baby pose. And allow yourself to gently rock from side to side. Maybe falling onto one knee and stretching the opposite leg long. And whenever you're ready, we'll roll onto one side or rock up into a seat. And then you can roll over to come into hands and knees. Let's stack the knees underneath the hips and the palms underneath the shoulders. And you can inhale to drop the belly for cow pose. Exhale to round into cat. Inhale for cow. And exhale for cat. And one more time. Now we'll tuck the toes under and press the hips up and back to find downward facing dog. You can take a moment to pedal the heels towards the earth one at a time sashing the hips a little bit side to side. And then whenever you're ready, we'll walk our hands towards our feet or feet towards our hands to come into a forward fold. Take a moment in your forward fold to cross your hands around your opposite elbows and then allow yourself to gently dangle, maybe ragdolling from side to side. You can shake your head no and nod your head yes. And then we'll release our hands down to our, towards um, underneath the shoulders. And you can bring the hands to the shins. Pressing into the shins will inhale for halfway lift with a flat back. Exhale to forward fold. And then bending the knees generously, you can round the spine and roll up one vertebrae at a time. Once you arrive at standing, we'll reach the arms up overhead and exhale to draw the hands to the heart center. Inhale to reach the arms up, looking up, Exhale to draw the hands to the heart center. And one more time. Inhale, reach the arms up overhead. And exhale to draw the hands to the heart center. Let's come into our standing mountain pose. We can begin to open the shoulders up, rolling them down behind you with the palms face forward. You might either close down the eyes or soften the gaze. And then maybe you find a little bit of rocking forward and back until you find what you consider to be your center. Imagine that intention you set at the beginning of practice. And just imagine like a seed, it's planted itself at your heart and it's growing now throughout your limbs, down your feet, rooting you into the ground. And we'll blink the eyes open and let's come to a wide-legged stance on our mats. And this is where um, blocks could be helpful. 
when we get to a wide-legged forward fold. But we'll start out coming into warrior two here. So with your feet parallel, we're gonna shift the left foot forward so that your heel is lining up with the arch of your right foot. From here, you can still face forward and then we'll bend into the left knee. And you might even heel toe your feet a little bit forward bending from the thigh towards the knee, allowing the knee to stack over the heel. And then if you'd like, you can float the arms forward and back and turn your gaze to stretch over your left fingertips for warrior two. Allow the shoulders to melt away from the ears. Feel your connection to the past with your right hand. Feel your gaze coming over your left fingertips with your sights set on the future. Feel yourself rooted and grounded in the present. With your next exhale, you can release your right hand down to the back of your thigh and then stretch your left fingertips up for peaceful warrior. You might take a moment to send a blessing to someone special to you. And then with your next exhale, you can float the left hand down and rest the forearm on the thigh, reaching the right fingertips up overhead for extended side angle. We'll inhale for peaceful warrior. And exhale, float it over for extended side angle. One more time, inhale for peaceful warrior. And exhale for extended side angle. And let's go ahead and meet back up in our warrior two. And you can straighten the knee and we'll rotate the feet to be parallel. Either bringing your hands onto your hips or maybe you can grab hold of a strap behind you or the back of your shirt, or you could even interlace your fingers if that feels okay for the shoulders behind you. And on the next exhale, we'll hinge from the hips, lowering the heart down for forward fold. We might allow the arms to gently fall overhead that feels okay on the shoulders. If not, we don't want any pain or pinching sensations here. With your next exhale, you can bring the arms back down to the low back, release the fingertips, and allow the hands to trace the back of the legs and come down underneath the shoulders. And here's where blocks could be helpful to rest underneath the palms or you can come up onto fingertips and we'll inhale here for halfway lift exhale to forward fold one more time inhaling for halfway lift coming up with a flat back and exhale to forward fold. Let's bring the right palm underneath the face on the block or on the ground. And then with your next inhale, you can peel the left arm open and maybe look up. Could even allow that hand to rest on the hip if it feels like too much exertion for the shoulder to reach it up towards the sky. On your next exhale, we'll release the left side, planting the palm underneath the face on the block or on the floor, and then inhale to rotate the heart open towards the right, maybe reaching the right fingertips up towards the sky. And on the next exhale, you can release that side, 
And we'll bend into the knees, bringing the hands to the hips. Let's come up to standing. And then we're gonna get ready for a warrior two sequence on the right side. So go ahead and pivot the right toes to face the right edge of your mat. You might heel toe your stance a little wider if that feels good for you. And then begin to hinge into that right knee. So bending from the thigh, reaching the, the knee towards the toes. And then whenever you're ready, you can float the arms forward and back to find warrior two. Find yourself grounded in the present, connected to the past, and focused on the future. With your next inhale, you can lower your left hand, reach your right hand up, and maybe find a different person to send a blessing to in your peaceful warrior. On the next exhale, we'll rotate the right forearm down to the right thigh, reach the left arm up for extended side angle. Inhale back to peaceful warrior. And exhale or extended side angle. And we'll take one more round. Inhale, peaceful warrior. And exhale, extended side angle. And let's inhale to meet back up in warrior two, allowing the shoulders to melt away from the ears. And then exhale, you can bring your hands to your hips, straighten the right knee, and then pivot the toes to face towards the front. Let's actually turn the toes this time to face to 45 degrees, and you can begin to bend into the thighs to come into goddess pose. With your next inhale, you might sweep the arms out and up, and then exhale to bring the shoulders or the elbows out into goalpost arms, cactus arms. With your next inhale, you can straighten the knees and the legs, straighten the arms, reach up, and exhale. Sigh through the mouth for a lion's breath, and come back into our goddess pose. Let's do that one more time. Inhale to reach it up. Exhale. For goddess. Once you're in this goddess pose, you might take a moment to lift one heel off of the mat and then lower it. Inhale to lift the opposite heel up and lower it and you could do one more on each side or with your next inhale you might lift both heels off of the mat and then exhale lower both heels we'll inhale to stretch it tall and then exhale you can release that shape and make your way to the front of the mat from here, let's stretch the arms out wide to the sides. And then with your next exhale, you can bring the right arm over the top of the left and just give yourself a nice big hug, reaching your fingertips back to your shoulder blades. Take a moment to send breath to the back of the body our seat of self-care, maybe lowering your gaze or closing down the eyes. And take a moment to really offer yourself gratitude for showing up today. And you can leave your arms just like this, or if you like, you might wrap the arms for eagle arms 
On your next exhale, you can come into a chair, sinking the hips back, bending into the knees. And then you might just lift the left heel, playing around with balance. Maybe you bring that knee up and over and wrap it around the right leg. Drawing all of your energy in towards the center. On your next exhale, you can bring your elbows towards your knees. And then inhale, we'll open it back up. Step out wide on your mat and shake it off. Leaving it in the past. Leaving behind any criticisms any judgments, and just offering yourself compassion. And we'll come back to center and get ready for the other side. I forgot to mention I did have a modification of this with the block. So if you did want to try it with the block, you could put the block next to your left foot. This will be for your right foot to rest on. So from here, once one more time, open the arms out wide to the sides. Take a nice big inhale. Picture somebody you haven't given a hug to in a long time. And just imagine you're able to give them a nice big hug, wrapping this time the left arm over the top of the right. And just give yourself a nice big embrace. Sending yourself and your friend or family member loving kindness. You can stay with your arms just like this, or if you'd like, you could try wrapping your forearms, maybe bringing your fingers, your right fingers onto your left palm. And then with your next exhale, you might sink into a chair, drawing the belly towards the spine Maybe you peel the right heel off of the mat, sending the weight into the left leg. And if you'd like to play around with balance here, you could wrap the right leg around the left. And notice I have the block there just to rest my right foot on. Coming into balance offering ourselves any supports here. Noticing that balance is not a fixed place, but it's a constant adjustment. And on the next exhale, you might draw your elbows towards your knees, bringing all the energy to center. And then inhale, grow yourself up tall, unravel, and shake it off, letting go. And releasing all effort. And we'll come back to center now. Let's inhale to reach the arms up overhead. Exhale to swan dive forward. Inhale for a halfway lift bringing the, sh the hands to the shins or to blocks. Exhale to forward fold. One more time, we'll come into a downward facing dog, planting the palms, walking the feet back. And whenever you're ready, you can make your way into a child's pose, bringing the big toes to touch, opening the knees wide, sinking the hips back and walking the hands out in front, lowering the forehead down to the mat, maybe to a block, or you could even stack the palms to make a little pillow to rest your head. Once you arrive in a comfortable child's pose, you might take a deep breath and exhale through the mouth, sticking out the tongue for lion's breath. releasing any extra tension or heat from the body.
And feel free to stay in your child's pose as long as you like. We're gonna be making our way into Shavasana, our final resting pose. For your Shavasana, I recommend that you find some way to make yourself nice and cozy. So maybe you bring that blanket back and lay it over the body. Or if you still have the blanket roll, you could use the blanket roll to rest under your knees. So find whichever way works for you to make your way into your comfortable, your most cozy, your most supported Shavasana. Maybe you even have that strap handy and you can rest the strap over the eyes to block out any extra light. As you come into your final resting pose, just allow yourself to release any thoughts that might creep up into the mind. You might imagine them like delicate, busy little hummingbirds, so delicate, so interesting, so unique. And just acknowledge all of those things and allow them to gently flutter away. Allow yourself to feel held and supported by the earth. Relaxing any tension from the forehead. Relaxing the eyelids. Softening the hinge of your jaw. Allow the shoulders to melt away from the ears. You might imagine yourself lying on a hammock, just feeling cradled and supported. Sensing the resources and the abundance, all that you need, all that you desire. coming to support you. Letting go of any need to do anything or be anything more than you are. Allowing that peace within yourself radiate out. You might imagine the glow of peace radiating from your body. Without any effort, Just knowing that your presence is enough. While you continue to rest in your Shavasana for as long as you'd like, I'm just gonna read you one thought for your week. And this is um, like a journaling prompt from the same book, The Yamas and the Niyamas, exploring yoga's ethical practice. So for this week, you might wanna practice courage by doing one thing daily you wouldn't normally do. If you're feeling brave, Make that one thing something that scares you. 
if you're feeling really courageous, get excited about the fact that you're scared and you're doing it anyway. See if you can discern between fear and the unfamiliar. Watch what happens to your sense of self and how your relationship with others might be different because you are courageously stepping into unknown territory. You can take what you want from that and leave the rest. It's just a little thought or suggestion for your week. You might begin to deepen your breath, inviting gentle movement into your fingers and toes. Maybe you start to rotate the wrists and the ankles and stretch the arms overhead, reawakening the body. Allow yourself to roll onto your favorite side, coming into a fetal position, feeling renewed and energized from your practice. Whenever you're ready, you can press yourself up into a seat. Maybe you invite your hands to meet at your heart center. You can allow your head to bow towards your heart. Offering yourself gratitude for showing up and taking a moment to revisit the intention you set for your practice today. Thanks everyone for joining me. Namaste.